What's going on guys? Today we are going to be putting together uh, a water chain system. I thought I'd just share my idea with you guys out there that uh, don't have an automatic water chain system or that's dealing with uh, buckets or water hoses or whatever the case might be. Um, I figure I'll show you guys uh, my method of uh, doing water changes over here. And hopefully this will be helpful to some of you guys. Uh, so first thing first is to have your water hose. And then I have to take you guys over and show you the water source. But you need PVC glue, which I got the PVC glue and primer. It's a two-part. You don't have to have the primer if you don't want to. That just cleans the PVC off. I got my PVC pipe. It doesn't matter what size PVC pipe you use or how long it is or any of that and then I got a few elbows here I got three elbows I got a, a coupling here I got this uh, coupling that will uh, go on to the this here um, brain freeze guys it will go on to the ball valve then the PVC will go in here. Uh, this brass piece just goes on to the end of the PV or to the end of the water hose. And if you want to, you can use uh, thread tape. I got some thread tape. I'm just giving it a test run. I'll go through and fix any leaks or anything that's uh, that needs to be adjusted once I get it all together. Um, then the, the ball valve will screw on to this brass piece. So the PVC thread is going to be uh, a little bit tighter thread than the, than the water hose, which the water hose is going to be like a uh, uh, more spread apart uh, thread. This is a three-fourth, everything is three-fourths inch, just in case anybody was wondering. Um, it's, it's the perfect fit for the water hose. You don't have to do any extra. So basically, um, this is the open and close valve, which, uh, you know, righty tighty, righty to close, lefty loosey to open. Or you can do it in reverse, however you want to do it. That's uh, completely up to you. Okay, so the next step is to, which I'm kind of putting it on in reverse, but it doesn't really matter how you put it together. You can put it together however you want. But I'm going to put it together in the steps that is going leading up into the, uh, into the tank. So the next step is to put the coupling on, which on the coupling I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put some, the thread tape on there just, just for extra security, which I was just going to wait to put this stuff on there, but. I can just go ahead and put it on there now. It's not really a, it's not really a big deal. If it leaks, it's only going to leak a little bit. It's not going to be like a, you know, it's not going to be leaking gallons of water per minute, or not even gallons of water per hour. So, plus, like I always say, I'm down here in the basement, so I'm not really worried about spilling any water, but. Just for the video purposes, I'm going to go ahead, thread this on there, and then uh, we should be leak-free. If we're not, I'll just uh, go back and tweak it however it needs to be tweaked. So, I got that on there, the thread tape. Then I just thread this into this uh, ball valve. I will start the thread. Get that on there nice and tight and secured. Screw it down as uh, screw it down as far as you can. That way, you know you assure yourself that you don't have any leaks or anything. These aren't the best uh, pliers, but they're gonna work for what I got. 
It's really old and cheap, really, but <laughs> they're going to have to work because I ain't getting up to go get another pair. But, okay, so that's on there. It's on there pretty tight, as you guys can see. I mean, there's a little lip there, but it's threaded in there. There's thread tape on there, so no need to really worry about that. The next step is to put the PVC in the end here. And uh, we're going to glue that down. So let me go ahead and get my glue. Before I glue that down, so my whole purpose of this is to try to get my my hot water and my cold water running um, in the one water hose so that way I can free up my other water hose that I got. I got two 50 foot hoses but I'm just trying to get it down to one 50 foot hose which is more than enough um, for what I got going on down here. My, my water supply is not 50 feet from any of my tanks it's about 35 feet from every well from my furthest aquarium down here so they come with those o-rings you just put those in there and then I'll show you guys how I'm gonna hook this up for now let's get back to um, putting the PVC together so I can show you guys how that's gonna work you do need PVC cutters so keep that in mind. Um, I don't. I'm not working with a lot of PVC, which I really don't need a lot anyway. But I basically just I put it up next to a tank, and I'll just see like you know how far uh, how far I really want the water to travel, which is not very far. You know, I'm just gonna hang it on there. The further the distance that the water travels, then the more water pressure you'll get but it really shouldn't matter you just you just really basically just hooking it up so that way you don't have to uh, so you don't have to watch your aquarium or you don't have to sit there and hold a hose in there or keep carrying buckets to the aquarium you want to make it pretty simple you can always adjust the water pressure down high you know up higher or down lower so that way uh, depending on what else you're doing in your fish room you can uh, pretty much just sit it on the tank and forget about it for a little while. You know, it's not, depending on the size tank, some, you know, smaller tanks are going to take a lot longer or a lot less time to fill up than, of course, these big tanks I have, like the 300, is, it'll take a while to fill up. Let's get this piece of PVC glued in there first. That's the primer. I'm not going to use the primer because I'm not really worried about it. Like I said, I can always come back and uh, tweak these things if if anything was to go wrong, which I don't think there is anything going to go wrong with it. So let me get this. And you guys see I keep fitting it in there just to make sure that it's, it's a tight fit already. And then once I get it like that, once I figure out which side I want to put in first, then I just come through with my uh, PVC glue let you guys see the PVC glue going on there like I said this is not for everybody some people out there already know this you know know how to do this or might already have a system put in place to do this but you just take that put the PVC glue on there and then you just give it a good push as far down as you can. And then you just let it sit, which this stuff sits in pretty fast. So within the next 30 seconds, it'll start to harden up. And then, you know, a few minutes later after that, it will be solid and uh, ready to use. So we got that piece on there. It's already in there. It's tight already. The next step is to put the elbow on there. 
this is just my method like I said you don't have to use this method at all but my next step is to put the uh, put this elbow on there get it fit as tight as I can get it so let's get that elbow on there and I always put the usually I put the, the glue on both parts but I'm just for video purposes I'm just gonna put it on the main piece of pipe and then that way you'll get that once you push it in there you'll get that that seal right here around it so that way you don't have to you shouldn't have to seal it twice so let's go ahead and get this glue on here let's get that glue on there real good it may not be the prettiest but it's gonna work so we got that on there then we take our elbow and push that as far down on there as we can get it as you guys can see I've uh, made a mess already got PVC on my hand PVC glue but this stuff it comes off pretty good I'm not gonna worry about it as long as it's not getting on anything else then we're fine this stuff is dry. Well, it's settling in right now. It's, it's going to be dry here in a few minutes. And then this up here, I'm not going to worry about that because it's already starting to dry. Like this stuff on my hand is already, it's already sticky. So then after that, you want to take your PVC. And you just pretty much want to notch out a small piece because the rim on the tank, um, I mean, it shouldn't be that big. But I do have one aquarium up here that has like a like a canopy on it. So I'm going to measure mine for the, the size of the canopy. Just for the simple fact, I'm going to be using this system on that tank too. If I wasn't, then I would just use it normal. So... Let me do that, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I got that piece cut right here. So let me get some glue on there. Just put some glue on there. Take that and uh, push it into the elbow just like that. Might make a mess. Don't worry about that. You can get it up later. Well, I can get it up later down here. I am in the basement, so it's not a big deal. I always clean the floors down here. I'm always mopping, sweeping, taking care of business. Okay, so for this part right here, you do want to line your elbows up um, so that they're pretty flush. That's the one thing I can say about this part. I mean, it doesn't have to be water travels a long way. But for me, I would like mine to be straight on. So that way, when I hang it on the tank, I can turn my, my ball valve on and forget about it. So let's put this next elbow on. Like I said, this stuff, it dries pretty quick. So... Uh, you do want to kind of, you don't want to rush it, but you do want to be kind of fast. You know, you want to, you do want to know what you're doing or have a plan already. So let's get that elbow on there. Let's push that down. It's already starting to settle. So let's push that down and get it on there as flush as we can get it. I think that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty straight. It may be off a hair, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's good enough. It's pretty spot on, guys. This thing is looking, it's already starting to come together. You guys can see that. We got our pieces. Then, for the next part right here, You want to take another piece of PVC. Okay, so for some people, 
they uh, they don't mind the water just you know pumping straight down, but for me, um, I'm gonna do mine's a little bit different. I'm just trying to figure out how far down I want it to go. Put that piece on there. How far down into the tank I want it. Okay, guys, so you don't have to glue this last part on. There's no reason to glue it. Uh, that way you can always switch it out. I'll show you guys that pretty much. Okay, so now that we got it set up, this piece here is just going to go on here like that. Okay, so you turn your water on here, boom. Well, you sit it on your tank like that. You put your water or you... You turn your water on. I got my valve on the side. If you guys want to, when you put your valve on, you can put it in the back uh, behind it here so you can just walk up and do whatever. Uh, this thing should hang perfectly on the side of the tank. Um, that's closed. That's open. And then this piece here, the only reason why I said don't glue this piece on is because you can always change this piece out. So... I put this elbow on there to kind of disperse the water out a little bit, but you can always take this piece off. I wouldn't glue either piece on. You can always uh, switch that piece out for a longer piece, or you can use that short piece, but it's going to be a lot of splashing. And then you can take this longer piece here, sit it down in there, and then... The water will just disperse down into one area instead of uh, going into different areas. But for your shorter tanks, like this tank here, that would that would pretty much ruin the whole the sand and everything, and it would just uh, pretty much stir everything up in there. Which not everybody wants that because people have planted tanks and stuff like that. So if you did do it this way, you would want to turn your water pressure down just enough to get the water to come over the elbow and down into the aquarium but for me this method here works best which there are uh there are like some uh for salt water usually people with salt water well this is fresh but it was salt before so they come with the overflow boxes you can always buy those overflow pieces to uh put on the end of here and disperse the water out into the water column differently but it's not a big deal for me so now that we got this part done the hang on piece let me take you guys over to my water source and show you the rest of the setup over here this is my setup um, I run my washer and my dryer through here I mean well of course not the dryers I run the washer through here, so uh, this this nozzle here just releases the water. That's how you, you turn the water on. That's why I got this piece on there, and then I'll put this piece onto the hot water, the cold water over here. My bad, not the, not the hot water. Not that it matters, because it doesn't. You should know you're hot from your cold. But then this piece here, this is just a washer and dryer piece is what it is. So you screw these hoses on the here, which I could take these, I can take this part off. Let me take this off. But having these pieces on there just gives me an extra, you know, seven or eight inches or whatever. But we'll take those off. We'll screw these on doesn't matter which one goes on where it's all going to do the same thing it's just for water to go through it so let's get those on there just like that i'll turn the water on make sure it's water going through there just to kind of clean it out a little bit and then you take your hose you hook your hose up to the bottom of that and then 
that should give you what you need. But we'll give it a test run over here just so you guys can, you know, see that it is working. I don't want anybody to... I don't want anybody to say that I've uh, stirred them, steered them into the wrong direction or anything like that. Let's water test that. Okay, so I got no leaks there whatsoever. Let's go back into the fish room and then I'll show you guys how I'm going to pump the water in. Alright guys, so first thing first, I'm going to turn the ball valve off. Then I'm going to go over here and turn the water pressure on and make sure this thing is not leaking. All right, guys, so I do have a small leak right around here uh, where, I, where the brass meets the, uh, the PVC. It's not a big deal. I'm going to go back, put some, uh, some Teflon tape on there, and that will get rid of the leak. But let's go down here and... Uh, See how this thing works. All right, guys. There's Popsicle. He is due for a water change, but for now we are just going to give our uh, device a little test run, make sure it's working. So let's turn it on and see. As you guys can see, there is water going in. I don't have my ball valve all the way on, but uh, you guys should be able to see that. Clear as day. There's water going in. Of course, we'll have to we'll have to uh, you know touch our water, test it, make sure that uh, the water is at the right temperature for whatever tank that we are putting it in. But that is how you do. Uh, DIY uh, automatic water fill up pretty much I don't know what to call it but that's what I'm calling it. so that's my DIY way of, of changing my water well putting my water in I, I also built something else let me show you guys that okay guys so I got this hose right here I bought this for uh, 16 bucks $17 at Walmart, and I just pretty much did the same thing on here. You see, I got the ball valve on here on the back of it. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, but this here is to do water changes. So I just put that into the tank like that, and pretty much this piece right here on the front, this piece comes off. This whole piece comes off, actually. But I put this piece on there for uh, like the smaller fish that I have so they don't get sucked into there. But that piece comes off just like that. I, only, I just basically took this and I, you see it's all burnt up. I put it on the stove. I heated it up. This is the same size PVC as this. So I heated this part up and then I just pretty much worked it on there and then I pushed it down. Just like that, so I could get that that tight fit on there. But this is how I do water changes. I put that inside the aquarium. It will only drain 90% uh, of my aquariums uh, halfway. And then I take my hose, I put it in the drain, and then I, of course I have to start the siphon. And once the siphon is started, you know you you, you got to have your ball valve open. You start the siphon. You can turn the ball valve off. Then you can pull this out of your aquarium and put it into another aquarium. And the siphon, once you turn the ball valve on, it will start itself up again for the next aquarium or however many you need to change. So if you guys like that, there's a good idea. I mean, that's, a, that's the way I do it over here as far as water changes. I just changed my, uh, my top off and my, my fill up with this one. I, you know, I just showed you guys that, so those are just a couple ways of doing some DIY stuff at home, you know, if you guys get bored or if you guys are just tired of carrying buckets or just traveling with water hoses or however you guys uh, do your water changes, I'm not sure. Alright guys, so 
let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. You guys seen how I top my tanks off, how I fill my tanks up, how I drain my tanks. Even though I do have uh, submersible pumps that work a lot quicker than draining the tank with that water hose, but I can just hook that hose up start the siphon i can go anywhere i need to go and i can come back and i know that my tank is not drained a hundred percent and the fish are still going to have water to swim in with no problem and i also know that putting that coupling on the end of it is going to reassure me that none of my fish get siphoned in through that tube so that's it for today guys I hope I helped somebody out out there. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe to this channel, share with a friend. And uh, till next time, guys, remember, always feed the fish. Holla.